So Beyond Light and the Beyond Void Doc is not long being aired. Today we quickly cover why in my opinion are the best and most important parts. How's it going guys? My name's DPJ and if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. Okay so let's go people. So firstly, anybody notice how much weight Luke Smith has lost? I mean jeez dude looks like he just shot out a camel. But seriously, good game. So it seems now we have Cabal allies. As we see here, Savala, Osiris and two Cabal beasts on what looks like the same side. We next up see and it's explained that we have to work with the stranger and with that darkness to stop it. Obviously talking about stasis here, which is what we already know. We then see a titan with a fridge on his back and a secret cold on his belt confirming the Norland Beyond is returning. I wish. So we then see Europa and it's said to be huge, cold, desolate and beautiful, much like a polar bear's ass. We then see two guardians taking a jug, cyberpunk helmet easter egg confirmed here. We then get a glimpse at what lies under the ice and it hints at secrets and they state they can't wait to see what we find here. Let's just hope it's more than a lost sector. We then see what I believe to be a loading in area to the new raid, the Deep Stone Crypt. We then get a look at the Dark Mode inventory and wow, I actually like this all jokes aside, this is going to be amazing. And if you notice when this subclass changes, we get a gentle glow that changes with it. We then get a quick glimpse at a few of those stasis subclasses and gameplay, with a few details on fragments within those stasis subclasses. Arc and now we've got stasis. The idea for stasis all really came back from the gameplay idea of freezing someone. That was kind of the theme that everyone kind of rallied behind. You know, Dima's an amazing concept artist, had some images that really kind of put us on the right path. What really was landing with that was the more crystalline notion. So when we say cosmic ice, that's kind of where the cosmic comes in. Once he freezes solid, I'm able to hit him again and shatter him in pieces. The pieces break apart and explode in those sharp shards that can damage you. So all of that kind of came together when we landed on that team. Stasis is gonna not only change the way that you can attack or approach combat, there's also some really great ways that you can upgrade it then you start getting into like the more interesting parts, things that we're calling aspects and fragments, which are additional ways to modify your subclass. Aspects are a little bit more potent. And then the fragments are the things that are class agnostic. But depending on what your class is and depending on what your aspects are and how you want to play, you're probably going to be starting to select different ones in there. This is just the beginning for Stasis. We're going to continue to expand on it. We're just excited for players to get their hands on this. They're then going to talk about how the audio for said stasis and ice was recorded and well, it includes a breast pump. Okay then. Everyone on the team blocks out about a week where we can say, okay, you're gonna go out into the world, microphone recorder, record anything that reminds you of cosmic ice. That gives us the palette that we can build the eventual sounds out of. I found personally that the best way to do it was at night. But doing scream screeches and blood curdling yells is a little scary at night. Then I had a really rumbly stomach and that also was recorded. There was also a breast pump. You have to make use of what you got. We then get a great shot at some new exotics, as well as explanations behind some of them. Take a look. See if you notice that quick glimpse at Omnigal Strike here. Instead of just being the gun that refills your magazine when you land precision hits, you actually get a little time portal and it starts spitting out rounds alongside you. You can actually have that on top of the arc sole so you can be your own little mini firing squad and build for it. Another one we have is the Laments. 
It uses up your sword's energy to give yourself a new combo that ends up in a big spinning slash. Probably the largest selling point for a lot of people is that it slices right through barrier champions. I think the largest draw for most people is actually going to be the fact that it is a chainsaw sword. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> For Beyond Light, we really wanted to create exotic armor pieces that formed a key part of your build around which all the other parts of your build could revolve. For example, the Titan gets the Icefall Mantle, which is a set of exotic arms that looks like it is crafted from Golden Age tech. When you activate it, you sort of slam your arms down, create a burst of stasis energy, and then you cover yourself in an overshield. The Warlock Exotic is Necrotic Grip. If you are facing a wave of thralls running at you, you can nail them with your melee attack and it starts to burst and sort of cascade through the whole group. Also, as we know, the Cosmodrome is back and it's said to be bigger than ever. Friend who hasn't tried it out, Burians, for free players. Last year, when New Light launched, we brought back a small portion of the Cosmodrome. This year, we're bringing back a much larger portion of the destination. It takes some of the experiences that started with the original. We then see the Cosmodrome's new vendor. His name is Shaw Han, rocking those young Ahamkara spine gauntlets. Next up, we see Udrin, and it's said he doesn't actually know what he's previously done. And while his introduction at first gave me goosebumps, check it out. Batten's crazy. Cyrus is in trouble, and of course, you're his only hope. We warned you it was going to be dangerous down here. Impossible. We finally catch up to what we saw at the end of Forsaken where we saw Aldrin being brought back to life by a ghost. Aldrin, who now refers to himself as Crow, he doesn't know what he did. The slate's been wiped clean when he was resurrected as a guardian. We know what he's done, and we know what he could be capable of doing, so now we're gonna spend some time watching him go back and forth. And beyond this, people is literally what this season is, all about what it will consist of. Take a look. In Season of the Hunt, we're partnering with the Crow and Osiris to take down the High Celebrant. It's creating these cryptoliths around the system, and those cryptoliths are attracting Elixian Cabal and corrupting them. So Zebu Arath is essentially corrupting herself and army, and it's our job to put a stop to it. I'm really excited to see Zebu Arath fleshed out more and to find out more about her relationship with Sabathun and what that means for year four of Destiny. Sabathun has been placing dominoes. And at the end of year four, she's gonna knock down the dominoes. We're gonna see what she's doing really up to. And so this year, she's putting the last pieces in place. And well guys, we'll end the video looking at the roadmap and the future, or the near future. We see what Beyond Light comes with, what's free to all players, with dates and times as what's to come before the year ends. And on that note guys, we are done. Just a quick roundup of what the latest Vidoc offered. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leaving a like really helps out. And if you do want to watch the full thing, I will link it within the video description. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.